Graham, it's down, but I'm very certainly not down because I'm here at Stevenson Beach Local Nature Reserve. It's a council-owned piece of land, but it's run by a dynamic group of people who have made this a better dune system. And dune systems are very difficult to look after. Ian, this nature reserve is local council-owned, but you manage it independently as a group, is that right? That's right. Um, the council does um, some basic tasks like grass cutting and making sure there are no health and safety hazards. But when it comes to quite large-scale habitat improvement projects, it's really up to the community to raise money for those. Uh, so at the moment we've got uh, a couple of grants in for um, building some new dunes. We've got 5,000 in total to build some new dunes in the reserve uh, to compensate for some of the ones that have been lost over the past couple of days. So you've gone out and actively sought that funding and raised it yourself? That's true. I think one of the lessons we learned early on was that there isn't really anyone else that can do it or will do it. You know, when it comes to actually getting money and implementing large-scale habitat projects locally, there is an organisation that really has that remit beyond SWT reserves or uh, RSPB reserves. Mm -hmm. So this is a do-it-yourself mentality, which is one of the things that we're so keen to champion on our BioBlitz, is people who want to get up and make a difference themselves. Yeah. And, and tell me a bit about your team, obviously yourself. Who, who else? How many, how many people are there with, with their feet on the ground doing the work, as it were? Oh, gosh. You know, we have about half a dozen people in our group. And uh, work in the ground is, a, is, a, is a, a funny term because I suppose what we do is we're a, a vehicle, a sort of um, a vehicle for funding. So we come up, we identify uh, a possible project, and um, we decide as a group if we want to do it. We get permission from the council to do it. We apply for funding, and often we hire a contractor um, for things like installing sand fencing. Hire a contractor to do it. So we're not often on the ground. We're around the table writing application forms okay. and things like that. So, and the specialities I've read are a group of hymenopterans. So we're talking about bees and wasps, which are sand-loving species, basically. That's true. Um, over the past uh, over the past ten years, we've amassed a, a list of bees and wasps, particularly from the Ardea Peninsula, which is the dune system that kind of abuts this one. Uh, over a hundred species of bees and wasp, which is the largest list in Scotland. Um, so it's a great site for, for bees and wasps, massively threatened um, by all kinds of developments um, and this is something, one of the reasons we record bees and wasps and other creatures so intensively is to try and protect against uh, development of the site. more evidence we have, it's an important site. Hopefully the more chance that we have, it's not going to be developed.